Um, actually what it is is kind of going more in depth to some of the other stuff that we've kind of already gone over um, capitalizing and stuff like that it's not really that yeah we're just about done you know I wanted to make sure that we had all the um, there's some there's some videos that I'm going to show you guys on some of the other stuff they have. Uh, translation magic. Uh, one of the ones that I think is kind of important is the automatic number conversion and stuff like that. So we may do that next week. But we only probably have, what do we have, probably six weeks of school left? Maybe. I think, it, when's school done, do you all know? Second week of May? Yeah. Yeah. So we probably have about six more weeks left. So I want to get as much done as we can, and we're just about done. Um, I wanted to make sure that you guys have all of your block files and stuff, because about the last two or three weeks, I think what we're going to do is start bringing the machines, and um, I'm going to have people come in, and we're going to do like a mock uh, deposition and a mock trial. Um where you're going to use the auto include files and all of that stuff. On the 29th, that night, it's that Monday, the last Monday of the month of April, I'm going down to Galveston to take the test. Okay. So I'll be here that day. Okay. So that's where we're going to do all the fun stuff, guys. We're going to have free pizza. I'm going to rent a clown, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your clown anyways. <laughs> The 29th, are any of you guys going to that? I was just going test. early, just, I'm going to stay with my aunt and uncle and just start studying for the test. So oh, that's that weekend? It's a bitch Wednesday, the 29th. Oh, okay. All right. Or something. Or that Wednesday is. We've done the add, remove line. Y'all know how to do that, right? Add line. Yeah. Add line is um, shift F5. For a fixed line, control Y deletes the line. Y'all know, y'all know. We can go through that if y'all want to. Y'all want to go through that or y'all y'all feel comfortable with that? What did you say then the command was that line? It should have been shift F shift F5. Oh. Is that what the gives F you a fixed line? Um Alt C gives you a centered line. So I don't know if y'all know that. Alt C will give you a centered line. Uh, you know what, Let, let's go through it real quick. It, it's pretty quick. Let's see how to add lines and paragraphs. Speed key F8 is good for both new and experienced is good for both new and experienced users. It opens a menu that you can use to insert or modify a paragraph. The menu lists every paragraph that is a part of your user settings. If you just press F8 and then enter, that inserts a fixed paragraph. But if you know exactly what kind of paragraph you want to insert, you can use speed keys, which have been set up for the most common paragraphs. For and that's what that's what I'm talking about right here. So all of the stuff is kind of set up. You can do the F8. It's just kind of a longer way to do it. But if you memorize these things for doing certain lines, then you know it, it's just an easier way to do it instead of going into you know the format or whatever. You know the the Alt C is a centered line, right flush, parenthetical, new paragraph, speaker line. That's the F2. So all of your speakers are going to be in there. I think you guys have done that, right? Mm -hmm. Where it opens up the little box, give you the speakers. So all of your speakers will be in there. It automatically sets it up in colloquy. So it automatically lines it up and knows what to do if you go through that command. Now, if you just, you don't know how to do it and you go through a fixed line and you do the shift F5, then you're gonna have to tab over and it's still not gonna set it up right because it's not gonna set up your speaker correctly. So unless you go through the F2, it's not going to set up your speaker correctly. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm talking about? So if you know, you have to remember these. So it's under the format. It's under the format um, 
toolbar little thing so all you have to do if you ever forget is just go into that you know but you know these are these are really neat ways of you know if you want to double space something single space something uh, any of it but it's F8 to insert or modify a paragraph okay so if you can remember that then it's going to bring you to to this anyway so it's going to ask you what you want to do do you want to put a fixed line do you want to put a parenthetical do you want to put a question answer well there's shortcuts for that guys but if you were in the bathroom or you weren't here that day then this is kind of how you learn it or you didn't watch the video then this is how you do it okay the, the double space and single space, it's alt. Yeah, it's alt with that little plus right up there. Yeah, right this one. Mm -hmm. I guess your hyperkey is up here. Should be. Because it's going to give you right here your fixed lines or whatever. Well, you can, this is single spaced. So when they're, when they're that far apart, that's when you know that it's double spaced. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Example, Shift F5. That's the speed key that inserts a fixed paragraph, or what you might think of as a blank line. F3 is the speed key to insert a question paragraph, and F4 to insert an answer paragraph. Here I need a question. Here I need an answer. F2 is for speaker paragraphs. This should be a speaker paragraph, F2. The speaker table opens. I'll pre you see what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about with the speaker list table that comes up. Okay. We kind of went over that last week and I, I think I showed you guys how to, how to do, how to rename it. Because it only gives you 10. It only gives you 10 options. And then you have to scroll down here. You know, if you have more options or whatever, highlight it hit enter well there's an easier way to do it you know if, say right here it's mr mcclinchy well i don't have any more so i have to go down here what you do no well, let me go in there you know what i'll do it afterwards s2 for miss house we've been inserting paragraphs but here's how to change one you could move your cursor from the typing keys to the mouse and then click on the paragraph button at the left edge of the screen and select the paragraph you need. But it's usually faster to just put your cursor in the first line of the paragraph and press the home key a couple of times until the paragraph label blinks. Then you can use a speed key. F3 for a question, F4 for an answer, F2 to select a speaker. You understand what it's telling you there? You can do the home home to get in here and it'll bring you right here. Or you just put your cursor in there and, and hit right click it I mean not left left click it and it'll it'll light it up and then that's when you can change it or whatever to whatever you want so I mean you don't have to do the home home but that's another way of doing it would you like an even faster way to change paragraphs then use hyper keys your cursor can be anywhere in this paragraph when you press capital Q for a question capital P for answer and control one two, three, etc. for different speakers. Two final commands, control P for paragraph continuation and control J for join paragraphs. Here the speaker paused for a long time and then continued, control P. Again, however, sometimes you want to join. You see what it's doing there? Control P just gives you a, it, it just gives you another paragraph, starts another paragraph. Control J, joins it to the last paragraph that you had. Okay? Make sense? Join paragraphs. Then the command is control J. Control J to join this paragraph to the previous one. So it's always going to put it with the previous one. It's not going to put it to the next one. Does that make sense to you guys? It's always going to add it to the last one. So if you want it as a, as a new paragraph, it's control P. If you want it as to join it with the last paragraph, then it's Control J. Control J is join, Control P, paragraph, new paragraph. Okay?
we're not going to go over that again. They're just kind of redoing the oops and delete. Y'all remember those, right? Oops and delete. to select the dictionaries that will be used for translation and for globaling. Okay, we kind of went over that. Y'all understand that, right? We kind of went over that. They just It kind of goes more in depth about selection, selecting the dictionary selection. So all these little lessons right here is just kind of going more in depth about what we've already kind of gone over. Some of the stuff is good. Some of it, you know, kind of repetitive. It, it's not, it's not going to help you anymore, I don't think. You know, it's pretty easy. You just go in here when you, uh, during your translation and select whatever um, dictionaries you want to translate with that certain job, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Do you have more than one dictionary? I don't, I don't really use them because all of ours are kind of the same, so I use a lot of the same, uh, I use a, a lot of the same briefs. But I know that if a big case is coming, like we have a big case coming back on Friday, that we've been hearing for three days and I know it's going to appeal then I'll use the one from the previous two days to translate in that job because I know that it's going to be the same people it's the same kids and I'll, I'll tell y'all later when this thing goes off because it's the case is kind of interesting and I'll kind of tell you about it a little bit just because of some of the briefs that I use on the case but anyway that's the only reason that I would use you know a job dictionary and something like that when I'm translating it okay do y'all have any questions about that? We can go through it if you want. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's saying anything. I guess everybody wants to do it. I don't. Some people are asleep. Tell me how you really know if she feel can about even about see from back there. But well, tell me how you really feel about one of got this. I don't want to go through it. I want to go through it. Let's see what this <laughs> Let's see how to optimize your Total Eclipse dictionary display. Dictionary display. Eclipse dictionary information is presented in columns, columns, and each column's dictionary information is presented in columns, and each column heading is actually a sort button. So you could click on the text column heading to sort your entries alphabetically. The program also keeps track of when each entry is created, modified, and used and you can sort by each of these categories of information. You can also sort by the number of times an entry is used, the number of conflict resolution rules that Eclipse Artificial Intelligence has learned for an entry, and the number of steno strokes or words that make up an entry. Perhaps you'll only want to show a few columns of information so that you can choose a larger display font. You can still see all the information for an entry by opening the steno bar. Shift Control F5 will show or hide the note bar. The vertical display of your steno can make it much easier to read. But here you will also see all the information you would normally see in columns, even if you've reduced the size of some columns to a width of zero. I don't know that you'll ever use that, but whatever. It's there. If you're if you're that anal to use it, help yourself. But I mean, I've been doing it 22 years, and I don't think I've ever used that to see how many times I've used a word or whatever. But I mean, if you want to, that's how you do it. Help yourself. Because there's words that I know I've, I've written mm -hmm. before, and it shows up that I have, I've never used it before. But I know I have. Are you sure? <laughs> Dictionary doesn't lie. I don't know. Good
I think here is just going to kind of show you. Let's see how to make dictionary additions or changes. The globaling process is certainly one way to add entries to your dictionary. But even if you don't have a text document open, whenever you think of an entry you'd like to add to your dictionary, you can simply press Control D. You see what it's telling you guys there? And I told you guys you can go in it anywhere in Eclipse. In the, in the gray part of Eclipse, in the beginning where it gives you just the gray little Eclipse, you can do it there. It might just be a name that you know you'll need to write. Just as you spell check your documents, so you can check the spelling of entries in your dictionary. You see what it was doing there? <laughs> Sweet. <clears throat> Okay, I'll, I'll go through it again. And really all it's doing is telling you that, that you can go through and it gives you a spell check. You know, so if you think that you stroked it wrong or, or you spelled it wrong or you're not sure how it's spelled or whatever, you know, if it was uh, illuminate or illuminate, whatever, illuminate, you know, uh, effect, affect, but you stroke them differently. You know, it's A, F, K, T, E, F, K, T, but you did A, F, K, T, but spelled it E, F, F, E, K, T, and you spelled it wrong. It's like, well, I think it's a C, but it might be a K. Probably shouldn't be a court reporter. <laughs> now, I mean, you know, your, your spelling kind of goes to crap, so I'm telling you, your best friend's going to be that uh, uh, the spelling. You know, going through and always checking your spelling. Always use that. Always use that, okay? And that's all it was telling you right there. Let's see how to make dick. Just as you spell check your documents. So really, all you do is shift, alt, s. That's all you do. And then you can check it inside of your dictionary, okay? So it's gonna bring this, it's gonna bring up the box and give you different, uh, choices of, of what it thinks you were trying to do. So you can check the spelling of entries in your dictionary. See how it, it'll bring up a box? Mm -hmm. You know, you did ultimately, it's like, well, I mean, did you mean ultravate, ultimacy, you know, any of those, any of those, and then you just kind of pick whichever one you needed, you know, if you spelled it wrong, you see? And then you press, um, Select the right one, and then it'll give you the okay. Not on there. Or change, I'm sorry, it'll change, and then it'll change it up here. So say it was untimed. You know, click on untimed. It's gonna, it's gonna, you know, bring it up, highlight it, change it. It's gonna change it there. It's gonna ask you okay, okay, and then it changes it in your, in your uh, dictionary, okay? Pretty easy. Any questions about that? I want to watch that again. <laughs> Finally, get some chatter back. There. Let's see how to conduct dictionary searches. When you open the Find Dictionary Entries, you open the Find Dictionary Entries dialog. Your cursor is placed in the text field. Let me type in correct and press OK. The display is filtered for me to show only the entries that contain correct. Okay, and you may have it in there. It's telling you you have it in there one of 67 times that you stroked correct in some kind of way. Corrective, correcting, correctly, whatever, okay? These entries are currently sorted by Steno but remember that you can click on any column heading to sort by that category so it'd be easy to see when the different entries were used or to sort the entries by the number of times they've been used. I'll return to an unfiltered display by opening the Find Dictionary Entries dialog and immediately pressing OK. Let's look at the dialog again. 
It contains a large number of shortcuts to help you find entries that meet specific steno or text patterns. And you can combine these searches. Let's say I want to find all my three-stroke entries that contain capitalized text. So here the display has been filtered by both steno and text, and the entries are still being sorted by the number of times they've been used. You understand what it was telling you there? So if you want to go through and find something that's really specific, you can do it. And that's how you do it. I mean, you, you go to that box, put in whatever you want. I mean, all the words that start with W, you know, you can do that or, you know, whatever you want. So, um, what was that command to bring up the box? Uh, F. F in dictionary for find. You have to make sure your hyper keys are did you hear it? Yes. <laughs> Any questions about that? Want to see that again? Let's see some of the choices that Eclipse AutoMagic offers for working with dictionaries. If you've dictionaries, if you open a new dictionary that does not yet have a dictionary that does not yet have any entries in it, Automagic will offer to help you build a dictionary from a word list. Or you can press 2 to add dictionary entries using your computer keyboard to indicate your steno. Or you can import a file or read a dictionary to add entries to this new empty dictionary. Here are the choices you'd see when you open one of your existing dictionaries. For instance, pressing 1 makes it easy to find entries. The most common dictionary searches are listed. For instance, pressing 1 now would filter the dictionary to show capitalized entries. And to get back to an unfiltered display, I would press 1 again to view all entries. Naturally, when you ask to find entries, you still have access to all the features of the full Find and Replace dialog. And you can always get to this dialog directly. But the Automagic choices can make it easy to perform the most common dictionary searches. Other choices make it easy to add, delete, or modify entries. And it's also easy to mark parts of your dictionary. Once you've marked entries, Automagic makes it easy to remove them, or copy them to other dictionaries, or move them to other dictionaries or perform other functions like printing lists of dictionary entries or compiling statistics. Automagic makes them easily accessible both for those who are just learning to use Eclipse and for experienced users who want to work with the program more efficiently. <laughs> you understand that? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Y'all want to see that again? <laughs> Really all it's telling you is that, I mean, you can modify anything. You can, you know, build a dictionary to something that, you know, that you think you're going to need. If you have something that's coming up and you know that you're going to use certain words, you can build a dictionary to that. I mean, I, it's always going to use your main, so I, I, don't, I don't see what, uh, what the uh, advantage is to that. But, I mean, you can if you want to, so, and that's how you do it. Understand? <laughs> if you don't, I'll play it again. Yeah. Let's see how to conduct dictionary searches. As in other parts of the program, speak. What are they? Dictionary's find dialog contains a large number of shortcuts. It contains a large number of shortcuts to help you find entries that contain specific steno and or text patterns. Many of these shortcuts are fairly self-explanatory. I don't know why it's doing that again. It's just kind of going over everything again.
Okay. I think that's all we're gonna go over today, guys. I want you guys to go over the uh, lock files. Do that. If you don't do anything else that we covered tonight, do those block files. Okay? Play with them in and all that? Well, no, I mean, think of the, uh, you know, how, how I showed you to go in there and define it on a certain stroke. So when you when you stroke it on your um, oh. on your machine, it's going to come up if you want it to come up. Oh. And messing with messing with it that way. Y'all have any questions about the stuff we went over tonight? 